In today's lecture, we will be discussing about crystalline material and non-crystalline material. So, let us begin. So, mainly the materials are broadly classified into crystalline material and non-crystalline material. And here specifically we are talking about solids. So, we will just say that materials are broadly classified into crystalline solids and non-crystalline solids. So, in crystalline material, the arrangement of atoms are in periodic repeated arrangement and that is called as long range order or LRO. So, in the upcoming slides, you will see that the atoms are arranged in a periodic manner and the smallest repeating unit or the unit cell is there and how the atoms repeat themselves in a particular pattern. And specifically when we are talking about crystalline material, we see that this arrangement of atom and the unit cell is in a long range order. So here is an example of a unit cell. This unit cell is of face centered cubic. So here the arrangement of atom is such that 6 atoms are on the faces and 8 atoms are on the corner of the unit cell. So here this is a smallest repeating unit of a crystalline material and specifically here we are talking about FCC or face centered cubic and this model is a hard sphere model that means all the atoms are touching each other. So one more model is a reduced sphere model. This model is basically for our understanding in actuality the atoms are touching each other like how we see in the hard sphere model but for our understanding we have the reduced sphere model then we have the extended unit cell where as a long range order we know that the unit cell keeps on repeating itself and then we get same material without any grain boundaries so now we will see in the upcoming slides what is the difference between a single crystal material and a polycrystalline material. So let us start with single crystal. So as we are talking about crystalline material, crystalline materials are broadly classified into single crystals and polycrystals or single crystal material or polycrystalline material. So in single crystal material, we can see that the arrangement of atoms and the unit cell is such that it goes on without any interruptions. So here interruptions means we are talking about grain boundaries. So grain boundaries are not there and the atoms go on repeating in terms of their unit cell and the material in entirety is like a single crystal without any interruptions, without any hindrance and without any grain boundaries. So for crystalline solid, when the periodic repeated arrangement of atoms are perfect or it extends throughout the entirety of the specimen without any interruption, the result is a single crystal material. Mind well, getting a single crystal material in nature like naturally is very difficult. So you have to have very controlled environment. That is why most of the material when they crystallize, they are polycrystals. So all unit cells interlock in the same way and have the same orientation. We are talking about single crystals. So unit cells. So unit cells are stacked on top of each other and they have the same orientation. So the orientation of the unit cell does not change. So now when we will talk about polycrystal, that time you can see how the arrangement of atom is different when we go from one grain to the other grain and that is the orientation of each grain changes. But here in single crystal, everything is same. The atoms are arranged in such a way that they are stacked and they are stacked in a particular direction, in a particular orientation. So to grow a single crystal, in an environment naturally is very difficult we have to have very controlled environment and generally that is very difficult so if the extremities of the single crystals are permitted to grow without any hindrance without any external problem without any external constraints 
the single crystal assumes a geometric shape having flat faces as with some of the gemstones a garnet single crystal here is shown in the figure if you see and this is a single crystal material and this is a gemstone which is very costly so that is why you know when we are talking about single crystal single crystal they don't occur naturally in nature so they occur at a very controlled extremities or at a very controlled environment there has to be certain pressure there has to be certain temperature and they are found under the earth you know in the core of the earth or basically beneath the earth surface but if you want to grow a single crystal in a lab you it is very difficult and you have to control lot of different parameters but you can grow these single crystals in the lab and there are many applications of single crystalline material and we'll see these applications in the upcoming slides so here is an example of a single crystal material this is an actual transmission electron microscope image where you can easily see if you focus on the the image you can see that there are small small atoms that are visible here and we will compare this image with another image which will come up later on where we can see that same sort of image is there and in that image we can see a grain boundary but this is an example of single crystal silicon and it has no grain boundary all the atoms are stacked and it has a particular orientation so within the past few years now let us see what is the importance of single crystal and why we are talking about single crystal because it has lot of applications so within the past few years we have seen single crystals have become extremely important for the modern technology in particular the electronic micro circuits which employ single crystals of silicon and other semiconductors so these single crystals these are used in the micro circuits or they are used in the electronic equipments and mainly you know in electronic equipment we have lot of data transfers which is going on you know these data transfer happen between the material which is going on so what will happen if the material is there without any hindrance or without any grain boundary the transfer of data is very faster imagine if the data transfer has to happen and there is a grain boundary in between of that material then the transfer of data will have certain hindrance it has to overcome that hindrance and that is actually very difficult for the material when the flow of electrons and all these things are there in the material for the data transfer purpose so now the race is going on to build smallest material smallest single crystal so that the data transfer is much more faster so they are trying to build these nano crystal single crystalline material in the size of nano meter and then they want to you know make this material as small as possible so that the data transfer is faster without any grain boundary so that is why single crystal is very important because it has a huge application in terms of micro circuits and you can imagine you know all electronic component basically have these micro circuits laptops cell phones pcs and all these all these equipment they have all these components which are made of single crystal silicon that is why in recent years you know it has become a huge market and we want to know more about single crystal we want to grow more single crystals and smaller in size so that the data transfer is much more faster now let us talk about polycrystals or polycrystalline material so generally the main difference between single crystal and polycrystal is that polycrystals have many grains and they have lot of grain boundaries so and most of the crystal like most of the crystalline material they solidify and they form polycrystals as we have said earlier that sing formation of single crystal is much more difficult and you need to have lot of controlled environment but when you solidify a material naturally it will form polycrystals so most crystalline solids are composed of a collection of many small crystals or grains such materials are termed as polycrystalline material so here is an image of a polycrystalline material so this is color coded image where you can see the green purple bluish area all these are grain so each and every grain is there and each and every grain is oriented in a different direction that is why earlier we said that single crystalline material it has one particular orientation of 
the entirety for the entire material but here polycrystal each and every grain it has its own orientation again one more image basically which shows the different different grains are there each grains are of different sizes and then we have lot of grain boundaries so the moment you see number of grain boundaries for sure that material is a polycrystalline material or polycrystal so just as an example you know how the single crystal and polycrystalline material they differ in terms of properties so here is an example of a welded component so in the middle the area in the middle is the actual weld area and the area which is there where we see small small grains basically this area is the actual base material so when we have welded the component what has happened is some of the area in middle it has formed an anisotropic property or the grains are oriented in a certain direction and the base material is isotropic because there are small small grains each and every grain is oriented in a different direction so here you know this is the main difference between single crystalline material and polycrystalline material that based on their orientation we get the anisotropic property and isotropic property similarly you know at the bottom you see the rolling of sheet metal is shown so when you roll the sheet metal you know there is a direction of rolling there is a transverse direction there is a longitudinal direction all these directions are there and when you look at the properties of the material there are grains which have been elongated in the rolling direction so if you pull the material in certain direction the property the mechanical property will be varying the material will not break or will break faster than the other direction so that is what we want to say that there is a difference of mechanical property in single crystalline material and polycrystalline material and here is a simple example that when you have the same material which is welded and the grains are oriented in a particular direction the orientation because of the orientation of the grain in one particular direction the property there is anisotropic and the rest of the base material where the welding has not touched as in there is no heat affected zone the properties are isotropic so this is a actual transmission electron microscopic image or tm image which shows polycrystalline copper so here we see two grains two grains are shown grain 1 and grain 2 and in between you can easily identify that there is a grain boundary this is a typical example of polycrystalline material where you can see that grains are there more than one grains are there and each grain has a different orientation single crystal versus polycrystal so let us see one more distinguished factor between single crystal and polycrystal how we can identify a single crystal and polycrystalline material so single crystal material here is an example of a single crystal material the property will vary with direction that is called as anisotropic property the property will vary with direction here is an example of bcc ion single crystal material the modulus of elasticity in a particular direction will be different than other so here the body diagonal the body diagonal the young's modulus of the body diagonal is higher it is around 273 gpa you can see and the young's modulus at a different you know elsewhere basically is around 125 gpa so there is a huge difference that means when such material is there and it is there in the entirety that means it has you know even the bigger material is there a chunk of material is there and it is a single crystal you can imagine if you are pulling the material along the body diagonal in a tensile testing or in any application basically the material will take longer time to fail or fracture but on the other hand if you try to pull the material in some other direction along the edge then the material will break faster and it will go to the ultimate tensile strength in a faster fashion or quickly as compared to the body diagonal so that is the difference between single crystal and polycrystalline material now let us compare polycrystalline material so generally the polycrystalline material they have isotropic property that means property does not vary with direction if you pull the material in any direction basically you will find that the 
property are similar so even you pull that body diagonal or you can pull it in any other direction because it has multiple grains the grains are oriented randomly you will get a property that is same throughout the material from wherever you pull so you have you are certain about the property you know you are somewhat certain about the property you know that if i pull the material i'll get this much property so it gives you surety but in single crystal if you pull the material from one direction and other direction basically the strength will vary let us move on further and see what is non crystalline material so non crystalline material are basically such material which lack regular arrangement of atom and they are in short range order that means atoms are arranged in short range order they don't have a long range order where atoms are repeating itself in the entirety no that is not the case and such material or solids are called as non crystalline solids so here you can see this is an amorphous silicon dioxide or basically glass and then you see the structure of the glass here all the atoms are randomly arranged it does not have any you know repetition of unit cell or you know it is very randomly arranged such type of material are non crystalline solids so sometimes such materials are also called as amorphous material so these are synonyms amorphous material they are also called as super cooled liquids sometimes as their atomic structure resembles as if they are liquid so in liquid also the atoms are arranged randomly you know there is no repeated arrangement of atoms similarly here amorphous material are also known as super cooled liquids because the arrangement of atom is such that it does not show any repeating unit so examples of long range order and short range order so imagine long range order are repeated unit short range order are the there is no repeating unit which is there so example of lro and sro is there this is a porous silicon dioxide and iron carbide film on a single crystal silicon wafer so at the bottom this is an image which shows single crystal silicon on that we have a porous silicon dioxide and iron carbide film which is there so this film which is there it is amorphous and it does not show any repeated arrangement of atoms and at the bottom you see that this silicon wafer is highly structured and it has lot of atoms which are repeating itself and they are arranged in proper order so at the bottom you the image is an actual image or actual microscopic image and the top image which which is showing as lro and sro is basically a schematic of the image which is shown at the bottom so just let us compare now single crystal polycrystal and non crystalline material so in single crystal everything is in a periodic arrangement in polycrystal there is somewhat periodic arrangement is there but it is individually in the grain that is why it is polycrystalline material that means more grains are there and in individually in the grain the atoms are repeating itself but the moment the grain boundary comes then the pattern changes and the material orientation of the each grain is different then we have amorphous solid no repeated arrangement everything is random it is like a super cooled liquid okay let us summarize what we have studied today we are we have talked about crystalline material we have talked about single crystal polycrystal and non crystalline material so crystalline material are basically they have periodic repeating pattern and furthermore the crystalline material they are divided into single crystal and polycrystal in single crystal we don't have any grain boundary the material repeats itself and throughout the entirety an example can be a gemstone and it can naturally occur or it can be there artificially like we can make single crystal silicon wafer for making lot of electronic components then we have polycrystalline material many grain boundaries are there it has n number of grains and that is what is called poly means many and each and every grain is oriented in a different fashion then we saw non crystalline material basically it does not have any form and it is also called as amorphous material it is also called as super cooled liquid so i hope you learned about the crystalline material and by watching this video you, you are able to understand exactly what are different types of crystalline material if you enjoyed the video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more such videos please subscribe to my channel thank you very much all the best